Seattle has been one of the more popular cities for relocating over the years. However, things have recently changed with Seattle seeing its first population decline since 2010 this past year. It makes you wonder why are people leaving and why is nobody else moving in? Today on Across the Globe, we're going to look at the 10 reasons nobody is moving to Seattle. As a side note, if you haven't seen our video on the best cities to live in America, that might be worth checking out for some alternatives. Okay, let's get into it. Number 10. You'll never see the sun. In the winter months, Seattle has some of the shortest days out of anywhere in the country. On the shortest day in December, there's less than nine hours of daylight, with the sun rising before eight and setting just after four. Seattleites even have a name for this phenomenon, the Big Dark. And while this might seem like nothing more than a nuisance, the effects can actually be quite serious. Have you ever heard of Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD for short? If not, let me break it down for you. Seasonal Affective Disorder is a form of depression related to changes in season. It's especially common during winter months, like those sunlightless days in Seattle. And it's clearly of concern to those who live in Seattle or are thinking of moving there. For instance, some of the top results on Google around this topic include how do people cope in Seattle in the winter? Why is Seattle so dreary? And my personal favorite, is Seattle the gloomiest city? Probably not somewhere you want to live, right? Number nine, crime. According to a recent article in the Seattle Times, violent crime has been increasing in Seattle for the last two decades, and in recent years, it reached a new level. In 2021, for instance, it increased 20% to 721 crimes per 100,000 people. The Seattle Times reports that's the highest level since 2001, or the highest level in over 20 years. Unfortunately, it's not getting better. From 2021 to 2022, violent crime increased 32%. Robberies were up 30%. And due to recent efforts to defund its police department, Seattle has seen itself poorly equipped to deal with this. So, if you value safety, join the ranks of people who are probably avoiding a move to Seattle anytime soon. Number 8. It's unfriendly. Have you ever heard of the Seattle freeze? For your sake, I hope you haven't. But if you're considering moving to Seattle, I feel a moral obligation to tell you what it is. The Seattle freeze doesn't refer to icy streets or a polar vortex ripping through the streets of downtown Seattle. No, it's something much, much worse. It refers to the fact that the people of Seattle are cold, as in emotionally cold. Those who move to Seattle apparently have a really hard time making friends because people here are known for being standoffish and clicky. First of all, the fact that people aren't nice sounds bad enough, but the fact that they have a name for it? That indicates that this problem is super widespread, and it is. There's even an entire Wikipedia page about it. And according to that Wikipedia page, this problem has been around for a while. Some of the first mentions of the Seattle freeze came about in an article published in the Seattle Times in, get this, 1920. That's right. This is a problem that's been around for over a hundred years in this city, indicating it's strongly ingrained in the culture by now. Number seven, wildfires. When you think of wildfires, you probably picture the wildfires you've seen on TV tearing through the hills of California. But California isn't the only place with wildfires, and Seattle is no stranger to them. No, I'm not saying that wildfires are racing through Seattle city parks with flames licking nearby apartment buildings. But due to wildfires in the surrounding area, residents are forced to endure quite a few smoky days each year. Although the 2022 wildfire season wasn't as bad as other years, with only 13 days of poor air quality due to smoke, other years have been much worse. In 2018, for instance, Seattleites suffered through 24 days of smoky air. In 2022, there were even two days in a row that Seattle had the worst air quality of anywhere in the world, beating out cities in China and India that usually rank worst in air quality. 
That's definitely not an accolade Seattle wants to brag about. Because of the bad air quality, during this time, residents were advised to stay inside, limit outdoor activity, and keep their windows and doors shut. I don't know about you, but to me, that doesn't sound like too much fun. Number six, it rains all the time. I know, I've already mentioned wildfires and the lack of sun in the winter being problems in Seattle. The weather can't possibly get any worse, can it? Well, if you consider that it rains on average almost every other day, then yes, it can. You heard that right. Seattle sees about 150 days of rain each year. Sure, that's the reason Seattle is so lush and green, but what good is the outdoors if you can't even go outside to enjoy it? Plus, the rain there isn't even really rain. It's not the cozy thunderstorm kind you can enjoy by curling up with a good book to the sound of rain gently pattering against your window. The rain in Seattle is more like a constant, annoying mist. You know, the kind where you open and shut your umbrella every five seconds because you can't even figure out if it's actually raining? I think you get the point. Number five, it lacks diversity. Diverse environments have been shown to be highly beneficial, whether that's at school, at work, or elsewhere. Studies have found, for instance, that students do better when they're in diverse environments, and companies with diverse teams have been found to be more profitable. However, if you're looking to move to a city where you can find a variety of opinions and people from different backgrounds, you probably won't find it in Seattle. In 2020, Seattle ranked 39 out of the 50 biggest cities in the U.S. for diversity. In other words, it was well in the bottom half. Sure, there are some neighborhoods that are diverse, and diversity has been increasing overall in recent decades. But the fact remains that Seattle is one of the least diverse cities among big cities in America. Number four, homelessness. Like crime, homelessness has been on the rise in many cities across America, and Seattle is definitely somewhere that's seen a growing homeless count. In fact, the number of people experiencing homelessness increased from 11,751 in 2020 to 13,368 in 2022. While that might not seem like a huge difference, it is. It's a 14% increase. I know what you're thinking. You're not homeless, and while you feel bad for homeless people, does it actually affect you? The short answer is yes. Homelessness has been shown to affect the availability of healthcare resources, can cause issues with crime, and even impact the allocation of tax dollars. In other words, it affects not only the person who's experiencing homelessness, but the community at large. And with Seattle seeing an increase in homelessness, you can bet the ripple effects are going to be real. Number three, houses are expensive and sparse. Imagine this, you move to a new city, you've carefully saved up enough money for a down payment on a house. You open up Zillow only to realize you can't afford any of the houses, but you persist. After days and days spent scrolling, you finally find it, the house of your dreams, and it's in your price range. You race over to a showing, it's perfect. You put in an offer, and then the real estate agent tells you that there are 10 offers ahead of yours. They're all cash offers, and they're all offering more than the asking price. This sounds like a nightmare, but it's a very real situation in a city like Seattle. That's because housing costs have been steadily rising. According to Redfin, house prices were up 5.2% from 2021 to 2022 and the median sale of $810,000. Compare that to the entire United States, which saw an increase in home prices of 2.9% from 2021 to 2022 and a median sale of $393,977. Yep, you did your math right. Seattle is about double that. But it's not only expensive, it's super competitive. Homes in Seattle sell after about 22 days on the market, whereas the median number of days on the market across the entire United States is 37 days. That means that even if you can afford a house in Seattle, you've got 15 fewer days to snatch it up than you might elsewhere. Number two, lack of public transportation. 
For many people, part of the attraction of living in a major city is the freedom of being able to get around without a car. Stepping outside your house and hopping on a bus or a train without having to worry about traffic, annoying drivers, or finding parking can be one of the biggest perks of city life. Unless you're in a city like Seattle, which has some not-so-great public transportation options. The average wait time for a Seattle train in 2021, for instance, was 8 to 15 minutes. While that might not seem like a lot, it's the difference between landing a job or missing the interview, making it to your exam on time or missing the first quarter of it, or bumping into the future love of your life in a coffee shop or missing that connection forever. The consequences are real. In addition, Seattle's public transportation has become a little bit mm, hazardous as of late. A Seattle Times headline recently warned that Drugs on buses have become an everyday hazard. A New York Post article said that secondhand fentanyl fumes threaten Seattle bus drivers. Doesn't sound like a great transportation option, does it? Number one, it's expensive. You probably guessed that Seattle is expensive by its housing prices, but what about other costs of living? Well, it's high up there too. In fact, Seattle had the ninth highest cost of living amongst cities in the U.S., according to data by the Council for Community and Economic Research. Check out some of these stats. The monthly rent for a one-bedroom apartment in the city center is $2,274. An inexpensive meal out is $20. A cappuccino is $5.15. Sure, that's less than cities like New York or San Francisco, but it still ain't cheap. In fact, it's far from it. So, what are the worst cities to live in America? Watch that video right here.